that's what the some uh, brief introduction to the course syllabus and some fundamental aspects. Uh, so let's go into the subjects and uh, let's say so what is the conclusion is that uh, analog signal and digital signals uh, we have seen the difference. Analog signal with respect to any number of amplitude, digital signal only finite number of amplitudes. If the axis is continuous it is said to be time axis is continuous and amplitude continuous means continuous time signals. If amplitude axis is continuous, time axis is not continuous, said to be discrete signals. Okay, so there is a, one more categories of signal is there which is continuous time signals and there always exists some confusion to everyone. So let me describe that, see. Uh, let's say, uh, okay, this is some kind of signal I'm giving, let's say, we are not going to talk with respect to voltage currents, everything will talk with respect to time now, right, x of t, y of t. So let's say this amplitude is 1, this amplitude is 5, and let's say this is of 10, let's say, right. So suppose if I ask you what is the amplitude of the signal at t equal to 1, so you will say answer is 10, is it not? This is 10. If I ask what is x of 0, you will be saying the answer is 0, alright. If I ask anything between this, you will say the answer is 10. But what is the answer if I ask you if you what is the value of x of 5? Like I mean uh, what is the value of the signal at this point of time? Here exactly here, what is the value of time? What is the value of the signals? So do you think it is 10 or is it 0 or is it something else? See strictly saying uh, what is the value of the signal at x equal to 5? This is not defined actually, this is undefined. Why is it so is? Why we are saying the answer confidently here it is 10 where it is 0? Because we have a unique solution here. If I say this is only 10, if I see here this is only 0. So do you think is it again unique here? No. You see the signal is making a transition from this point to this point. So it can take any value between 10 to zeros. We cannot define what is the amplitude uniquely in this time, exactly on this instance. So we say that such kind of signals where there exists a sudden jump or sudden discontinuity, so we say these kind of jumps are discontinuity in signals. So whenever there exists a sudden step or jump, we say these are known as discontinuous signal or piecewise continuous signal piecewise continuous signals. That means continuous, that means in the every every amount of time, the amplitude is defined uniquely, but there exists some piece of time or some instance are there where the amplitude is not uniquely defined. So this is known as piecewise continuous signals, right? So you should understand that wherever there exists a sudden jump, these are known as discontinuous signals. But there is a scientist uh, whose name is Gibbs, uh, so he has given some logical justifications like okay strictly saying this is not defined but only for mathematical convenience in some time uh, while doing calculations uh, if you really need what is the value of the signal on a undefined time. So he said you take the signal average values before discontinuity and after discontinuity. So what I want to say is. If you want to find what is the value of signal x of 5, you take the average of before discontinuity that is x of 5 minus plus x of 5 plus divided by 2. So this equal to 5 minus is 10 and this is 0 so divided by 2 so I should take this is 5, right. So this is again saying strictly saying undefined but only for mathematical convenience we should take that amplitude is average of this and this so this is 5, right. So this is only for mathematical means. So here afterwards in the entire course wherever you will get some kind of jump and if you really need that value to solve some kind of problems, so this is the average concept that we have to use it. So strictly saying undefined only for mathematical convenience we will be using this kind of uh, calculation, okay. So let us talk regarding <coughs> definition of standard signal, please take down a heading. Definition of standard signals. Okay, what do you mean by standard signals? Uh, the, in the sense, like see, like how many signals uh, are existing means there exist infinite number of signals, right? 
you draw some line that itself is signals. But what I mean by standard is the things that we need to understand in our course. So we will be dealing in the problems and all. So that's what I mean by standard signals. Uh, there is only two questions so far in EC where they have asked what the definition of impulse signals and definition of the signal signals. Once in old days in 92s and that, in that time they have asked questions. But even if uh, these we don't get much question directly from these, but here afterwards in the entire course we will be repeatedly using all these things. So let's have a look on this in detail. So various categories we will discuss. So let's start discussion for continuous time signals. So once continuous time signal is over, then I'll come to the discrete time case, right? So see one more thing, like up to that uh, uh, first three, four chapters before four year series, that means uh, I have given the list starting from fundamentals, classification of signals, systems and LTA systems. And in these four chapters, we'll move parallelly for continuous time and discrete times. It's not like that in some of the books we'll find uh, they define separately continuous time and separate discrete time. So we'll be moving parallelly up to four year series. From Fourier series onwards, we'll have separate Fourier series, Fourier transforms, Laplace transform. We'll define just for the continuous. Then DT, FT, and uh, D, uh, jet transforms. So jet transform these things, DFT, and all all those comes on discrete time case. So first initial four chapters, we will be moving, moving parallelly because many things are similar. Just you need to understand everything by comparison. <coughs> so few signals. Let's see that we are going to deal with. So first signal that we study is, you know, you mean by unit impulse signals, unit impulse signals. So let us understand what is the meaning of this and why you are using a word unit here. So let us see this. So if you see any book, uh, any standard books, uh, how does the impulse signal is defined is, so how we define is we always take a standard signals whose area is one. It can be any standard geometrical figure, need not be standard. It could be any non-standard geometrical figure also. You can take some uh, trapezium kind of things. You can take some sync signal. You can take some triangular signals. Any kind of shape you can take, but only for convenience. So let me take with the rectangular pulse. See, for example, let's say I am saying that, uh, or let's start with this is minus 1 and this is 1. Uh, width is 2 and height is 1 by 2. 1 by 2. So this amplitude is 1 by 2. If I ask you what is the area, what is your answer? Width is 2, height is half. So area into, area equal to height into width. So that is 1. So the area is 1 here. So now what I am doing is, so I am reducing the width by factor 2. At the same time, I am increasing the height by 2. So what I am doing is, so I am reducing the width by 2 and uh, increasing the height by 2. So that means, I am increasing by 2 means this is become 1 now. And if I say this, what is this? So reduced by half means this is minus half and this is plus half. So width become 1, height become 1, the area of the new rectangle what I get here, this is again it is 1. So this is a repeated process I am doing. So once again I am reducing the width and okay and once again I am, oh, let me draw it somewhere here. So this is minus 1 and 1, this is half. I don't have space actually to show this. Fine. <coughs> okay. So same thing I am doing here. So I am reducing the width, increasing the height. So this is I made this is minus half to half and this is one. You can see that area is still equal to one. Once more time I am doing like this. So this is a continuous process you have to do like this. Reduce the width, increase the height. But you need to take care that you are maintaining the area as same one. So you can see here one thing that if I keep on doing like this, so I'll this, this will be a repeated process. So what I'm doing is each time on each iteration, I'm reducing the width by 2 and increasing the height by 2. So at the same time, the rectangle is become thinner and thinner and it is become more height and more height. But the area under each rectangle is still getting maintaining 1. So it is a repeated process. It's a chain process. If I keep on doing like this, it is very much clear that at the limiting point of time, the width become 0, height become infinity and the area on the curve will be still it is 1. This seems to be very odd in the initial time. Like I am saying that I am still reducing this. So if I reduce, reduce at the end case, width become 0, height will tend to infinity but the area will be 1. Once again, 
So when I'm reducing this, it will tend to zero, tending to zero. Height is tending to infinity, but the area will be still one. And under that particular case, whatever the signal we get, that is what we mean by impulse signal. And what is the meaning of this unit impulse? Is unit is word. This word is used with respect to area. You should always understand whenever we define impulse signal, we always define this with respect to area. This is not with respect to amplitude. The amplitude of impulse signal is always infinity. Area is always finite. You should remember that. Of course, this is just a theoretical signals. Like we cannot have a signal in the lab which is having zero width, infinite height, area one. This is just only a mathematical convenience we are using this. Physical generation of this kind of signal is impossible because in practice you cannot generate a voltage signal or current signal whose uh, uh, the height is infinity, right? So that is not possible. So if you keep on doing like this on the limiting case, what you'll see is still I'm drawing like this uh, just to say, just to show you that the width has reduced, reduced, which is almost zero. So I have just shown a line here, but height is very high. It is still going like this, but it is not possible to show. In pen and paper, height is infinity. So what I'm doing is, so I'm just putting the arrow mark like this, and I'm writing here one. So the meaning of arrow mark is, it is still growing, but the, when I write it is one, you should understand that I'm indicating that it's an impulse signal, and the area of the signal is one. If I write here two, so I would say that it's an impulse signal whose area under the curve is two. If I write five, I should say it's an impulse whose area is five. So you need to understand, if I talk regarding continuous time case, when I say something into impulse signals, so you always say that this multiplying factor is the area under the signal, this is not the amplitudes. So what kind of notation we use to define this one is, we use delta t functions, right? So let us understand what, how do you represent this mathematically. So delta t equal to, so this is defined like this, whose amplitude is infinity at t equal to zeros, as I said, under limiting case, it will go to infinity. And whose amplitude is zero, when t is not equal to zeros. So if I say that the width is zero, so it will exist only on this time. So if you observe this one at any amount of time, so it is of course zeros. But we say the area under the signals is still equal to one. That is what we mean by unit impulse. So unit I have written, that's why I'm writing here one. If I write here uh, impulse of area two, so I should write this as two, right? So this is what the definition of the impulse signal is. So once again telling you this is just a theoretical statement. In practice, we cannot have a signal whose amplitude is infinity. And once again, this is the definition I am giving you with respect to continuous time signals. When I come to discrete, once I change this notation delta n, this will not be valid. It will be something else. So don't mix continuous and discrete. So as time comes, I will be keep on highlighting that. But you need to differentiate it, okay? So this is the definition of this. You can check this is, I think, get 97 one mark questions I have asked in EC, right? So this is the definition of the impulse signals. Uh, let's see some properties of the impulse signals, properties of impulse. Uh, once more, again, I'm telling you, like, uh, this, uh, whatever the chapters I listed in the beginning itself, you'll have, uh, in each chapter, a huge number of properties. So we are not interested to see the proof. That means how it came, how it happened. If you are interested, go through any standard book. You'll find the derivation of that. I'll be giving you only the end conclusions. So you have to remember this. You have to solve the problems. So there are various properties. So first thing what you study is that is known as time scaling property of this. Once again telling these things I'm discussing with respect to continuous time case. In this theory, it will be something else. Don't mix both of things. Time scaling properties. What this property says is, if I replace this time t by a t, so we can write this as 1 by mod a delta t. This is what the time scaling property of impulse. You please note down these things, so we will be using this. So prove if you are interested, you can refer any book. So these are standard results. So based on this, we say that a impulse signal is even signals. I am going to extend this later on. The condition for even is x of t equal to x of minus t. Now, in this, if I take a equal to minus 1, what I will get? I will be getting delta of minus t equal to delta t. Is it not? This is equal to, you can write, delta of minus t equal to delta t because minus 1 mod is 1 and this is delta t. So, we say delta of minus t 
we call delta t. So, this is just an extension of this. So, impulse signal is even signals. Now, <coughs> let us say the product property, product property or what you mean by sampling properties. Like if you multiply a particular signal with the impulse signal, what happens? And the same thing we use in sampling theorems where we multiply a continuous time signal by impulse train. So, that is used there. So, that is why you are defining this as product properties or sampling properties. So, what this says is that this says that if you are multiplying x of t with delta of t minus t naught, this is given by x of t naught delta of t minus t naught. Let me explain this how this happens. So, wherever I feel this is needed or it is it will take less time. I will explain this. I hope you have copied this right ok. See <coughs> delta t signal look like this. If I ask you to draw delta t your delta t signal look like this. How does delta of t minus t naught look like? We are going to see this. This is time equal to 0. How does delta of t minus t naught look like? Delta of t minus t naught will be it is a shifted impulse. How we get this? We will see this. So, this is shifted impulse. So, I am not writing 1 1 if I write means this one this is the area. So, now what I am doing is I am going to multiply this particular impulse signal with respect to some general signals which is of some arbitrary shape like this. And you know very well that when I multiply these two signals, so except this t naught instant, so everywhere the amplitude is zeros, is it not? And you know something into 0 is always equal to zeros. So, what I want to do is I want to multiply these two signals and what is the answer I am going to get? This is very much clear. Left to this t naught, this is 0, this is something else. 0 into something else is 0 and to the right of this, so impulse signal is 0 and 0 into something else again zeros. But what we will be getting here is if I take this instant is t naught and I will say that this particular amplitude is x of t naught. We do not know what kind of this at the general generality if I am writing this amplitude as x as t naught. So, if I multiply these things the shape of impulse will not change, but what will change is wherever this is 1. So, we will have here x of t naught and where this will exist? This will exist at t naught. So, if you how do you represent these signals? So, it is an impulse signal which is existing at t naught instant. So, for that reason I am writing this and the area under the signal is x of t naught. So, that is what I have written here. x of t multiplied with delta of t minus t naught is always equal to x of t naught into delta of t minus t naught. <coughs> so, you need to understand when I am doing this, right. So, you assume that it was earlier a rectangle to that rectangle whose area is 1. If I multiplied x of t naught, so it will in the limiting process same x of t naught will be maintained and finally the impulse area will change to x of t naught. So, this is what we will be ended up with. So, we will use this and the third one that we are interested to see is something known as shifting properties, shifting property of impulse. So, what this property says is that if you integrate this x of t delta of t minus t naught, what you will get let us see. Okay. So, now I want to find as I have indicated the properties. So, the signal what we got is this into this equal to this I got. So, what I want to say is I just want to integrate the signals. So, this signal I want to integrate this right. Okay. Now, if I integrate this how much I will get? You know very well that the integration always gives the area under the signals. This is a mathematical concept integration always gives the area under the signal. So, see if I want to find this integration it means that I want to find what is the area under this particular signals. So, if I see what is the area under this see this is not enclosing any area 0 this is 0 only thing is that I am enclosing a area of x of t naught here. So, what I should say is area under the signal is x of t naught, but do you think this is absolutely correct? This is correct, but we should have a condition for this. See in this limit if I write here this is a to b, what is the meaning? You are finding the integration in the range from a to b. So, if I want to say that this answer should be equal to x of t naught, what is my condition? The condition is if I assume that this is t 1 and this is t 2, then this t naught should be enclosed between this t 1 to t 2 limits. So, let us say if I am integrating the signal that is product of this this and this this signal, if I am integrating this to this, do you think the answer will be x of t naught? No, it is of course 0. 
If I integrate from this point to this point, do you think the answer is this? No, no. When you will get the answer x of t naught? Only when you will enclose these particular signals. So for that reason, we are putting a condition that if I say that this product between, if I want to find between t1 to t2, of course dt will be here. This is x of t naught provided this t naught is lying between t1 to t2. Else it is 0. 0 else. It means if you are not enclosing the limits in the integrations of this t naught, so it will be of course zeros. So these are very standard relationship. So let us solve some standard problems that has been asked in previous year gate based on these concepts. So, so far in electrical there is one question, EC one question, instrumentation also one question. So let us start with the easiest one that have, they have asked in the EC. Okay. Uh, but you, whenever you are using this relation, this care should must be taken, like if you want to apply this formula, so you should always check that the T naught instant you have already included on this, then only you can write this, otherwise this is uh, not a valid properties, <coughs> right. So let us uh, let's solve the, some problems. I hope you have copied this. minus 1 to 3 sin t delta of t minus 6 dt. Uh, this is not a get question. I think this is get question. You can check the question bank. I do not remember which year. Okay. This is one question. And in 2011 instrumentation, they have asked one question. 1 by square root of 2 pi integral minus limit infinity t square into e power of minus t square by 2 into delta of 1 minus 2 t dt. This question they have asked in instrument 2011. The question is evaluate these expressions, right. And one more question they have asked in one of the previous year exams. Integral minus mid infinity sin of 2 minus t into pi by 2 divided by t square plus 7 into gt dt into gt dt where gt is defined as, they have given some shape, minus 1 minus a to minus 1 and the amplitude is 1 by a, this is time, this is gt signal, where gt is this and they are asking this question, evaluate the integral as a tending to zeros. I am not writing the statements, evaluate those integrals as a tending to 0 in gt signal. So, yes, these are the, the questions, let us try to answer this. What is the answer of the first questions? <coughs> See, I already said that you need to check that this impulse is existing at t equal to 6, but you are not including the signals. So, if I multiply these, I will have the impulse at t equal to 6, but you are taking the integrations between minus 1 to 3, so blindly you can say the answer is 0 here, is it not? What about this? This is based on the product properties, which is x of t into delta of t minus t naught. So by referring that identity, which is, okay, this one x of t delta of t minus t naught equal to x of t naught delta of t minus t naught. So these properties. If you compare this, this is what my xt, this is what my t naught. So x of t naught, so sin in place of t substitute t naught. So sin pi by 2 into delta of t minus pi by 2. So sin pi by 2 is sin 90 is 1. So answer is delta of t minus pi by 2. 
so we will have an impulse at time t equal to 5 by 2. Okay, so these are very easy questions. So let us try to answer the third one which is a bit good compared to the remaining two. Okay, see. Even if this is looking like this much highly complicated, this is one easy problem, it is not that tough as instrumentation problems. So first thing is you need to understand, so the properties what I have given you, so everywhere I was having the term delta of t minus t naught. So I want to say we have seen the property integration of this, right. You need to understand here I told this is delta of t minus t naught. So here afterwards he remembers, so whenever if I give any properties, if this is like this, okay, these all are fines. But whenever you are not having this, I mean to say if delta a t minus t naught form is given like this, that means the scaling factor of t is not 1, it is some other constant, let us say a, you should not apply this property as it is. So if you know the properties with respect to standard form, first convert this kind of signal into the standard form and then use the identities. So here the problem is, if this could not have been, it is having plus t, I would not have any issue here. I, this is the same problem like before case. But here I have minus 2t. So what I want to do is, I want to make that in the standard form, like which would look like delta of t minus t naught. Then only I will use the properties. So let me do some algebraic manipulation here. So, okay. So I, let me do it here and I will substitute back there. So delta of 1 minus 2t can be written as delta of minus 2t plus 1. Is it not? Delta of minus 2t plus 1. What I can say is, from this I can take minus 2 as common, if I take minus 2 as common, so how much I will get here, this is t minus half, t minus half. So using the identity that delta of a t equal to 1 by mod a delta t, time scaling properties, so that you need to understand, delta of a into some factors. So we can rewrite this as 1 by mod of minus 2 to delta of t minus half. So, which is of course 1 by 2 into delta of t minus half. So, you are learning first time, so I am moving step wise, otherwise one step only you can write the solutions. So, what I am doing is, so this in place of this I am substituting that expression here. So, I am writing here, so 1 by square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity t square into e power of minus t square by 2 and in place of this I am writing this expression which is 1 by 2 so that 2 I am writing outside so 2 into delta of t minus half dt. Now you check once again is it satisfying this property or not. If I want to say this answer is x of t naught I should say that t naught is lying between t1 to t2. Yes impulse is existing at half my limit is for all range, so there is no issue, so answer is x of t naught. So if you compare this, so we can say that this is x of t, this is delta of t minus t naught. So what is the answer then? This is the constant multiplying factor is outside like this and this is x of t. So I should evaluate this x of t at t equal to t naught. So you need to evaluate this at t equal to half here, right? So if I do that, so substitute half here in place of t. So this is 1 by 2 root pi. This is 1 by 4 into e power of, sorry, it's minus t square by 2, right? Minus 1 by 8. So the answer is 1 by 8 square root of pi e power of minus 1 by 8. So this is what you answer for that questions. I have given this for one mark only. 1 by 8 root 2 pi e power minus 1 by 8. So the only new thing that what we have seen here is that we have modified the scaling factors into the standard forms. So this is what I want to say. If delta of a t minus t naught is there, you can write this as t minus t naught by a. So which is 1 by mod a delta of t minus t naught by a. So these are not giving a separate properties. This is understood. Okay. So whenever you have a scaling factors, first make this in the standard form, then apply all the identities. Okay. I don't think these are tough problems. I am explaining you, that's why I am taking two minutes. If you solve, not more than 30 seconds. 
Okay, the last problem they are saying that evaluate this integral where g t express and given to you when a is tending to zeros. So now you see in this particular waveform the g t is okay. So g t waveform is given like this. G t the waveform they have given. So they are saying that this is minus one minus a and this is minus one and this is what is my amplitude is one by a. If I say a is tending to zeros, so if I substitute here a equal to zero, what do you feel that here one by zero become infinity? This point is minus one. This point, if I substitute zero, this is also minus one. So that means these two limits are same. Like width is zero, height is infinity. What kind of signal is it? Under limiting case, it will be impulse signals. Where it will exist? It will exist at t equal to minus one as a tending to zero. So g t if a tending to zero, the signal look like this. Is it not? Okay. So I can say g t when a tending to zeros. So this is nothing but equal to impulse signal which is existing at t equal to minus one. And what is the dependence of this? This dependence is delta of t plus one. Delta of t minus t not signals. I'll tell this shifting all these things. It exists at a time t not instant. So if you compare with this, so if I say delta of t, if I, it exists at t equal to minus one, if you substitute t not equal to minus one on this, so of course this will be delta of t plus one. So this representation, I think you know this. But I will explain this, right? So here, what I will do is, because you want on a tending to zero, so in place of g t, I will substitute these values. So if I solve it, it is minus b to infinity. So sine of 2 minus t into pi by 2. This is t square plus 7, and this is delta of t plus 1 and dt. So again, this is coming in standard form. This is x of t. This is delta of t minus t naught, and t naught equal to of course minus one in this case. And here it is existing at minus one. This is covered in these limits. So the answer of this one is you evaluate this particular expression when t is equal to minus one. So how much you will get if you evaluate this at t equal to minus one if you substitute? So this is sine three pi by two. Is it so? sin 3 pi by 2 by t square plus 7, this is 8, that's all, is it not? So sin 3 pi by 2 is, I think this is 1, so it should be 1 by 8. I am not missing anything, right? t square plus 7, so yes, so the answer is <coughs> By eight. Uh, you just check it. Sine three pi by two is plus one or minus one. Okay, whatever it is. So that is where the answer is. So only one point is uh, they have given instead of direct things, or they have given the description of impulse signal in the indirect way. So these are the questions from previous year papers. So are applying these properties, make sure that in the integration limits you have covered those, otherwise the answer will be by default 0. And what is this? Uh, let us say x of t, I am giving a waveform to you, which is like this. This is 5, this is 10, this is 0, this is 2. Uh, if I ask you, minus root infinity, what is x of t delta of t minus 5 dt, where x of t is this, then what is your answer? Yes, this is covering all these range, like minus root infinity is covered these things. So <coughs> this is 5 means this is minus infinity I am covering. So the answer should be x of 5. But if you substitute x of 5, as I said, strictly this is not defined. So in the options, if it is given that this is undefined, you choose that is your right answer. But only for mathematical convenience, you should choose 10 by g, 10 average concept again, 10 plus 0 by 2, this equal to 5. Strictly undefined, mathematical convenience answer is 5. But more correct answer is undefined, okay. If both options are given, 5 and undefined, choose undefined. 
what is this? Tell the minus 2. And what is the answer? This is x of 2. What is x of 2? x of 2 is 2. There is no ambiguity here, right? So, answer is 2. Okay. Next one. Next one. Question number 2. 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 So these signals we will be using very repeatedly, right? So step signals. So how does the waveform look like? And the symbolic notation that we use to represent this one is UT signals. And let's see the waveform, then we will give the mathematical description of that. So what the step signal says is that step signal is a signal whose value is 0 for negative value of time, whose value is some constant value or positive value of time and at t equal to 0 exactly this make a transition from 0 to this constant values and if I say this constant value is 1 that is the reason I have written here unit step that is a step signal of height 1 if I write here 2 I would say that it is a step signal of height 2 or step 2 right so how do you give, define this signal mathematically so we would say that ut equal to 0 for negative value of time ut equal to 1 for positive value of time and exactly at t equal to 0 what is the answer strictly undefined but for mathematical convenience average of after and before discontinuity after 1 before 0 1 plus 0 by 2 half so we should say that ut equal to 1 for t greater than 0 equal to 0 for t less than 0 equal to half for t equal to zeros in some of the books, you will find that they will be writing a t greater than equal to zeros. That is not absolutely correct, right? So either you say this is undefined or you say this. That's the point. What is the importance of the step signals? Like impulse signals, so as I said, physical generation of impulse signal is impossible. In a similar way, physical generation of step signal is also impossible. So you may be thinking that in networks in transients, we have already learned the step signal, step response of RC circuit, step response of RL circuits, faster circuits, those things we have learned. But why again I am saying this is not defined? Yes, this is strictly not defined. Why? Because if you see the, uh, the shape of the step signal in a good quality CR in your lab, you will not find where the signal is suddenly jumping like this. You will find a very high slope like this and this will look like this. Of course, you don't feel this much of gap if you see this in a very good CRO in the screen you will be seeing that signals will look like this. So that means this infinite slope line, this vertical line that does not exist in practice if you generate this signal using function generator or some other kind of devices, right. And what is the other reason that we say the signal does not exist in practice is truly saying whatever the signal we will talk in this course, not a single signal you can generate in a lab. These are all the theoretical statements. See. For example, this one, let's say, if I say step signal, step signal start at t equal to 0, where it ends? It ends at t equal to infinity. That means, up to t equal to infinity in one the amplitude 1. Can you generate a signal which exists at t equal to infinity? Never. Whenever you start experiment, you start at some time, you end at some time. You cannot have a signal which infinity. What is infinity? Infinity is undefined in stands. So, these are just the mathematical convenience, right? So, you should not link this, how we are doing that. And why this step signal is used is, step signal is used for transient analysis, particularly in the DC case, in the RC network, RL network, we have seen in networks that when you give a sudden jump, so it is used for mathematical modeling, the first thing I told, like whenever is a switching happens, so instead of indicating a physical switch, we can simply replace this by some step signals and this is understood that it is automatic switch. So it is used for modeling physical mechanical switch, used for modeling mechanical switch. We have seen this in transients, role of step signal in transient analysis, I told that points. And apart from this, <coughs> particularly in the control system analysis, so most of the time uh, your major concentration is step response, step response. You always get this kind of response if it is under damp systems. So it look like this kind of response, right? So most of the time, uh, <coughs> the standard signal that we use in controls is impulse signals, step signal and ramp signals. But apart from this, step signal is most frequently used things. There are various reasons. One of the reasons in control system study is always your requirement is how does your input is tracking to outputs. Control system means 
we are having some reference inputs. How does that reference input is tracking to output so that error will be zero in the normal unity feedback system or whatever this you say this. That means you are always interested to compare compare the input signal with output signal. So this is what my input signal. We say step response. Input is step. That is what input. And this is what response. This is my output is. We want to always compare how much the deviation of the output from the inputs. So the point is, if you take the input signal as a constant signal, if one signal is constant with respect to time, if other one is varying, you can easily have a visualization how the variation is happening. But imagine if this is changing with respect to time, this is also changing with respect to time, comparison becomes difficult. So that is one reason. And of course, this is used in the transient analysis and this maintains constant amplitudes for all range of time up to what it exists. So most of the case in the transient analysis of RCR networks, we use the step signals. Okay, so nothing much to say about this. So once again telling you, whenever there exists a sudden jump, strictly that is defined as discontinuity in signal system, we term that point as discontinuity. So let us see <coughs> the next category of signals which is DC signals. So DC signal is uh, nothing but uh, you, there is a small difference exists. Okay? A DC signal is one whose maintains a constant amplitude for all value of time. So this is let us say some constant k, this will exist for all value of time. So only difference between step signal and DC signal is uh, that is uh, it, you should say that this amplitude is some constant k for all value of times. So this is constant for only for one range of time for positive value of time. If you are saying this is from minus infinity to plus infinity, this is what said to be a DC signal. Of course, physical generation of DC signal is not possible. You may ask, ask, make argument now, many times we have used DC source. Yes, you have used that. We say which is a constant signal, the DC signals. But in is to coming to the strict sense, coming to mathematical uh, point of view, like the signal is defined, it should exist from minus infinity to plus infinity. So that does not exist. But in lab, those things what we do is those are not switched DC signals or switched step signals. You are switching you are switching on that source at some time and you are closing that experiment some amount of time. So you have used that at a some amount of time. So whenever you have used it has maintained a constant signal. So in that sense we say it is constant. But strictly mathematical definition is it should be for all value of times. So that is what I am saying. Physical interpretation and mathematics is totally different. So in fact any signal what I will talk not a signal signal you can generate in the lab. So suppose if I say e power minus at signal, e power minus at signal look like this, where the amplitude is going to 0 at t equal to infinity. Again it is an infinite duration signal. No infinite generation signal can be generated. Sinusoidal also you cannot generate. Whatever you generate in the lab, it starts some time and some time. But if you see the definition, it should exist for minus infinity plus infinity. Again this is just the theoretical statements. That never happens in practice. Okay, <coughs> now let us see the unit ramp signal, unit ramp signals. Ramp is uh, like staircase, we use uh, ramp, so those ramp we also uh, normally English use words. So a signal which look like a ramp is known as ramp signals. So this look like this unit ramp signals. So when I say unit impulse, that unit terms in the impulse case I told area. When I said it is unit step, I said this is amplitude. But what is the role of this unit in the ramp case? This unit is stand for slope here, right? So when I say like this, it is having of course a slope and that slope is 1, so I say it is a unit ramp signals. So unit ramp signal is 1 whose amplitude is 0 for negative value of time and for positive value of time it increments at a rate of 1 means per 1 second 1 increment. So if I want to find what is the amplitude at t equal to 5, so if I say slope is 1 means at t equal to 5 it should touch amplitude of 5. So how do you write the mathematical representation of this? The notation we use for this one is r of t. We say it is t for t greater than equal to 0 and 0 for t less than zeros, right? And again you should not be confused one thing, like you should not say rt equal to t. When I say rt equal to t, this is of course not correct. 
how does t signal look like t signal look like this t for all value of time so from minus to infinity this is what t signal is but what is rt rt is this what should i do to this signal so let's say slope is 1 what should i do to this signal so that it will look like that of course the difference between this signal and this signal is i don't have this part right so what i'll do is i'll multiply step signal that is i'll multiply 0 for negative value of time i'll multiply 1 for positive value of time something into 0 is 0 you know something into 1 is something so t into 1 become t something into 0 becomes 0 so if i multiply these things what i'll get is for negative value i have 0 for positive value whatever shape is there written that so we normally say that r of t signal is written as t into ut see this will be using very frequently r t is t into ut so sometime r of t minus 2 if it is there we can expand this as t minus 2 into u minus t minus 2 t minus 2 into u of t minus 2 so like that we can use it ok so let's see now some other stuff what is the relationship between these signals so even if we are going to see some other signals but these are the uh, important signal that we will be using very frequently so we should understand impulse signal is defined with respect to area don't say it is amplitude continuous case right so ok let me write like this when I say unit this is area in case of impulse signals unit impulse this is height or amplitude in case of step signal this is slope in case of ramp signals so the meaning of unity is different in all the case all right so what is the other kind of signal is uh, that is uh, something known as a signal signals so we will see what is the relation between all these three so next category so you take this is signal 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 So first one is the uh, impulse step ramp 3 DC4 this would be fifth one. So the notation you use to indicate this one is S G and T. So how to define the signals? So this signal is also look like a step signals but you should understand this value is some positive value for positive value of time and its value is negative for negative value of time. So this is my time axis t, I would say that this is 1, this is minus 1. So this is what the standard signal definition is. So we say that this amplitude is 1 for positive value of time equal to minus 1 for negative value of time. And what I should write at t equal to 0, again you see that there exists a discontinuity. So average of 1 and minus 1, 1 plus of minus 1 divided by 2, it is 0. So I am writing this. So this is what I mean by the signal signals. And very frequently you come across a situations how to write the signal signal in the step signal form. If you see this is my signal signals, my step signal look like this. My step signal look like this, this amplitude is 1. So if you see, forget the amplitude, you forget this amplitude, how does the shape will look like? The shape, how do you compare the shape of this? Only thing is that this is having 0 amplitude for negative value of time it is having minus 1 amplitude for negative value of time. What should I do to this particular signal so that it should look like this, forget the amplitude, only the shape. That means if I raise the signal, if I add some constant values, so this minus 1 will come to these things. So the relationship between signal t and ut is, the signal t can be written as 2 ut minus 1. See how is it, how is it 2 ut minus 1? If I say 2 ut, so 2 ut means this amplitude is 2, so this is 2 ut and minus 1. Minus 1 when I say means minus 1 for all value of time. So I want to do 2 ut minus 1. So what I am doing is I am drawing 2 ut separately. I am drawing 1 separately. If I do this minus this how much I will get? For positive value of time this is 2 minus 1 become 1. For negative value of time this is 0 and this is 1. 0 minus 1 becomes minus 1. That is what the relationship I am saying. Signum t equal to 2 ut minus 1. So there are few more signals. So after that we will see the relationship between step, impulse and ramps. So let us take a break and we will continue after the break.